So I will first I will uh, explain a little bit of my, my work and how I, I came to work with Patrice and made this art and science collaboration. Then Pat Patrice will talk about his uh, subject of research uh, uh, in the frame with my project, somehow, with our project. And then we are going to talk together about the project it itself and how we want to develop it in the future. Okay, oh, okay. So, so the project is called Waves, and we are actually interested in the waves in the water waves from a long time. So I will show a little bit of my work, and uh, let's say that my work tries to tame the incessant flows that rules our, our lives. Uh, first of all, I think that my uh, work came as an autobiographical research of uh, the back and forth of the memories and the uh, and yeah, of the memories because I I, I I came from Chile and for me there is a, the, the 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 fact that you li you leave uh, a country or a place it at automatically draws a, a concrete line between the past and the future, uh, the past and the present, let's say, and also the else the here and the elsewhere. That's so uh, for me the, the the line is really clear and for me it was interesting to work with this back and forth of the memory and also the, the idea of there is and here and also there which is going on at the same time. So, so I became to work with this and then more and more I was interested about the movement, the flows and uh, yeah, um, about all that uh, change. I was really interested, interested about the dynamic textures. So I began to work with the urban streams, information flow, blood flow, and all that circulates of like fluid ga gases or liquids, and also about migration, of course, because of my link between the, with, the, with this topic. And I, I wanted to say that the water, and especially the sea and the ocean, has an, a special place in my work. I, I think that I really included most of the time in it. I guess it is for several reasons. One of these is because the sea represents for me, of course, there is a, this dynamic texture which I'm really keen on, keen of, and also that it, it, uh, it's important for me in a plastic and aesthetic way, but also as a symbolic uh, uh, meaning because it shows that there is a beyond, there is a transportation, there is a, a journey that we can. Um, a journey that we can do uh, through the water, but also the water is still there and it doesn't change, it is there as well. So there was this, um, this also like double thing about movement and uh, staying at the same place. And for, from other part, of course, um, I came fr uh, from a country where uh, the, the sea is really, we are surrounded by sea and it's really important in our landscape. And also, I, I have memories of the waves being very violent and the sound of the waves smashing against the rocks is for me something that is really reminds me of my childhood and the summertime. And also, it's, also, it's, it's more like, and I came here to Marseille and then we have the, 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 the sea again and we have the waves, but right now the waves are smooth, they're more silent. They are not main, uh, make, making uh, so much uh, movement. So there is this difference that I thought that I think is very interesting as well as a, as an as an object, as a texture, as a sound object as well. And I, I guess that this um, this um, really you know, get into my work with all, all this idea of back and forth of the memory of the space, to see the sea as a symbol itself. So this is. I wanted to just make a little statement why um, the water mix uh, has a, an important place in my work. And then also in my video installation, as I'm all, all the time thinking about this back and forth and this uh, network somehow, my installations, I used to uh, work with installation with several uh, monitors or several uh, uh, video temporalities that are in the same room or the same space. So for me, it's interesting to to see my work uh, uh, at the same time the, um, the importance of one item of one of one unit or individual, and also the the connection that are made with all the other um, uh, items of the of the work. How the how one video works, but also how this video works with the other video. 
because I, I must say I, I, I most of the time use video as a tool and also photography, but mostly video. So, um, uh, this is a this is a urban video installation made with 16 TV displaying in four in four columns vertically, and uh, there was also six, six speaker with the pan vertical uh, sound diffusion. So we were in in, in Aubagne in the in the urban space, and I this was the first uh, art and science collaboration, let's say, where I was um, uh, collecting. Uh, images from the science labs of Marseille that were working with the matter, with the plasticity of the matter, where uh, until when it can break, until when it can uh, get flame, which uh, plasticity it has, how it moves. So I get a lot of um, images that I took away, I took out of the labs, and I give, I give them, I appropriate them, and I give them uh, the, the meaning that I wanted to, to, to say with this plasticity. So when we were in, in front of this uh, giant installation, we were uh, inside the matter somehow and feeling also the plasticity that we have that maybe sometime we don't see. So I wanted to show some little abstract of this. So this was a, more like a, a, a film, and you, you should imagine that it was a video installation with so these 16 screens, I see monitors, that for me also was a, a, a way to show the time lapse that we have in different uh, TVs, each representing the time scale somehow of the phenomenon that we were seeing of the material expanded or getting br uh, broken. This was made uh, in, uh, within the frame of the school where uh, Jacques Sapiega will show later, I should say. So then, um, as we begin a first collaboration with, um, it was this kind of first collaboration with scientists, I, I heard that the Patrice was working with uh, some bioluminescent algae, and I wanted to make, I said I wanted to make a project uh, about light and flow, of course, and so I, we began to work with Patrice and to have a culture of algae that we uh, make grow uh, uh, through, I don't know, a couple of months, maybe four months, to have enough algae, liters of algae in salt water, to be able to put them in some uh, uh, plastic tube, uh, uh, um, 
and we are connected with uh, silicon tubes and were, that were connected with air pumps. So we create a black room where the people were getting inside and uh, then we, uh, we, I, I, we were um, and manipulated the air pumps so the, the, the algae were excited and so the a, a little uh, a delicate blue light was uh, getting off of the alga. So as we have these um, tubes, it was like some or uh, alga orchestra somehow, or, or ballet, I may say. And we have also the air pump of, 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 of the bubbles and we have some mics, so we have this uh, sound and light performance made by the algas themselves somehow. And in, in, the, in the back, uh, in the left side, and there is a, a more or less the installation with the different tubes and hoses. And on the right side, we cannot see it really very well, but uh, we made again this installation to um, uh, shoot it with an intensifier camera so we could be able to uh, take the little light that the algas were doing it. But um, I should say that the algas, this, as it's a blue light, it's very, very, it's a frequency that we cannot. Uh, uh, take with a normal uh, camera, it's, it was impossible to get to catch, it was just visible to the eye. And then with the Antisify camera, we have black and white colors. Then, then uh, because I'm, I'm interested of, of these dynamical textures, as I say, of course the water has an important place in my work, but also the urban uh, mobility in the city, it's for me, it's also related. It's, we are all the time moving. And this is a video installation that I did with uh, 10 different scre uh, digit screens where we have the, uh, the uh, dynamical texture of the, of the urban spaces made by urban uh, furniture or uh, public transportation of mobility. So we have somehow in each, and I really like this idea of put it just in one little frame, and we have just one tempo, one mobility, one trajectory, and then each of them has its own trajectory, its, its own uh, movement. So in the, in the, within the whole, we have some kind of really uh, movement and yeah, dynamic, different dynamics within the, 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 the work. So I can show you, you know. It's without sound. Huh? So this is one of, for example, of the images that we see in that we see in the in one of the uh, little screens. So this is to show that I am interesting also in dynamic texture. This is another work that I did uh, lately with Diego Ortiz, with also was uh, getting the um, getting out of the labs the uh, image made by scientists that uh, were also working uh, with the matter. This time with the nanoscale matter, also the uh, outer space and uh, in the deep in the water. So I, I, we, are, we are making this um, 
plastic uh, editing with the images going from one world to another to make the connection about also the lines and the forms of the different images that we had. This all was also made with, uh, with Satis as well. And then this, this work is called uh, Va et Bien, uh, Back and Forth, maybe I should say, or something like this. And this is a work that I did from, this is a video work that I did uh, inspired by the painting made by my father, which was inspired by a photography made by my father as well. And what I wanted to work with this is, is what is interesting for me is here that we are um, interrogating the memory of the memory. And also it was as an update of the work of my father as a, paint, as a painter, a work of, that I did as, as a videographer. And what, which is also interesting that I wanted to show, you, show it here is because it's the sea and here on the, on the right side we, uh, my father painted me in front of the uh, um, Pacific Ocean uh, with all this uh, future in front of myself that I couldn't see somehow in a symbolic way and then I made this movie uh, 20 years later uh, this time in front of the Mediterranean Sea which, and with another uh, time of waves but the wave we're already there, and it's kind of a cycle that is being made from the memories of the memory, but also the cycle of the water that it's continue going, of the waves that come come back and forth, and also my, uh, in the in into the tra trajectory of the movies, I go into the water and I disappear from a couple of minutes, and then I go back at the same place, but this time completely wet. And uh, anything change? Just the, the the person in the back go always from the left to the right side, as they were like in, also in ballet that I didn't uh, tell them to do that. But it was somehow that when I go to the water, there is an absence, uh, and you can feel the absence because the, the everything that is still in the frame is still going on, and the tempo is still there. Even if someone is missing, the tempo is still running and running. So so it was. For me, a, a really interesting work uh, for several reasons. And then um, I, I discovered this work of Ronnie Horn, which is um, some pictures of the Thames, I, I think we say in English, from the river, which she uh, uh, photographed a different uh, um, personality of the water, should I, uh, should I say. Uh, on the same water, and she said this this uh, quote, quote that I take and that I, I, I really like is, when you realize how water never loses its, its identity, it's always discreetly itself, which is something that is important for me because I, I like this water. I like, I, 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 I see how it, this, it takes a different personality. It's at the same time unique and at the same time uh, uh, melted into the, Big water, <laughs> should I may say. So this is a photography work, and I did uh, video work about the wave, about the movement of the water. Which I wanted to really, uh, it was a really simple work that it was for a drawing um, exhibition. It was my way to say that I was drawing with the video because I have these uh, uh, stretches, uh, sketches, uh, lines, and movement that it, and rhythm that it was uh, taking not for, so not for a pencil, but from the water itself, its movement, in its interaction with the atmosphere, with the sun, and how it creates a, a non-linear surface and non-linear boundary. It was all the time moving, completely malleable. And this was for me really interesting as as idea of, of a drawing, but also as idea of, of, of a dynamical texture and an aesthetic uh, experience as well. So I began to make a series about this uh, this, vi this video work with the sea. I I create three of them in different uh, waters. This is the Medi Mediterranean Sea. I did also in a, in a river in Luxembourg because I was living there for a while. And, uh, and the Red Lake in the uh, Altiplano in Bolivia as well. So I, I want to show you some picture of the installation at the end of this video. You can see how the rhythm 
it's created also by, of course, the, the, the ships that are going, going through, but also the, the, the wind and the sun, the clouds, because the, this is also the clouds that let uh, get through some, uh, some light, and then the clouds came and totally get the light out. I didn't make any, how can I say, I didn't make any uh, editing as a um, effect of this, it really the cloud that goes and back and forth. So, um, this is uh, the, uh, the video installation that I did with the three, um, well, we, you don't see that well, I guess. I don't see that well through here. But it was, I have three, uh, one big screen and two little sc uh, screen. You have the blue one, the little blue one there, uh, which is the one that you see. Then you have the red one is the lake, which is, was red, and then the big uh, screen, which was the, the river. So each of them, each of these screen has a different temporality, a different movement, and a different turbulences, and also the the effect that you have uh, looking at them. It was completely different. One, it was something calm, something that you were somehow, yeah, relaxing and being. Uh, very yeah, good with it. And then the, on the back, there was this very uh, violent uh, flow of the river. And the people was all the time saying that they wanted to somehow uh, uh, drown, drown? Uh, to get into the water. They wanted to uh, jump into the water. And then the red one, it was really like something strange. And uh, what I like there is that each, it was all the time water, but it, each uh, the water has its own identity, and inside of this, e each film, there was also each identity, each line, each movement that I was making, the temporality. So, so as we have this uh, video, uh, uh, Patrice came also to see one of my exhibitions with one of these uh, water waves in, uh, video, and he said, well, it's interesting, you are working with this uh, this, uh, this is one of my object of the uh, research study, and you are so, uh, one of your object of um, uh, art creation. Which, so we were sharing the same, uh, uh, the same passion from the same object, which was the wave. So we decided to, to create a work together. And we were thinking a lot and making also uh, an experimental uh, things in the labs and some images, and so I will give the word to, ba to Patrice, and then we will come back to talk about this. Just as, ex as explained by, uh, by Ravira, we, we, we met for a long time, and uh, one day she invited me to one of her uh, demonstrations. And I realized that uh, both of us, we were very deeply involved in uh, water flows and waves and things like that. And certainly one of the reasons is also because I grew up in Brittany, you know, very by the sea. And certainly somewhere in my brain, as in, in her brain, in your brain, we, we are really deeply impressed <laughs> by, by water and by waves and by, by sailing too and things like that. So uh, that was in 2008, if I remember well that uh, uh, I was involved in, the, in a new project uh, following an idea of uh, Yves Pomo. Yves Pomo is a, one of the brilliant physicists that we have in France, and he, he has inspired many of, many of us here, you know, here in Marseille and in Paris. And uh, uh, what I'm going to, to tell you is twofold, in fact. One is a past publication we made with uh, work with this idea of Yves Pomo, and uh, the second is what we are doing now on the wave breaking and uh, uh, together with the uh, Ravira 2. So the, the, to start with is uh, to, uh, I would like to present to you this uh, geometrical figure which is, uh, which is called uh, Catastrophe. And, and the description of that came from, in particular from uh, René Tom and a French mathematician and uh, this is so you have to imagine a, a piece of paper, and you have different kind of singular, singularity that can happen to this paper. The first one, the simple one, is called the fold. It is when you do that. Okay, that's, that's a fold. Imagine you are walking along this 
this paper like that. When you arrive at this point, you just fall down on the other part. Okay, so that was the thought. The second one is this one. This is this is the cusp. C'est la France in French, and you imagine it's kind of it's a kind of fold, but it has a it has a corner together like that. Okay, and this we, we have that very often on uh, on our uh, on our uh, clouds. Okay, so the mathematical uh, equation that describes that is this thing: z cube minus a z minus b equal equals zero. And if you look this fold from the top. You, you see that you have some part of the, of the, of the region of a, of, a, of a plane where you have three solutions to, to this equation. And this, have a, this, this is a part between the, these uh, red lines, these red curves there. And outside, you have only one solution. Okay? So at one point, you see it is, I have one solution to a problem. And you just cross this border, and you have three solutions to the problem. And that's a kind of singular behavior. And you see that these numbers and these very simple geometrical things can drive a lot of things in physics and even in everyday life. OK, so, the, so following the, the idea of POMO, I will not go into the mathematical details of that, OK? So this equation describes the evolution of a variable that we call U. And this equation is called the non-viscous Berger equation. So this equation of the top left there describes the evolution of u in time, which is just the transport of u and its derivative du dx by u itself. Okay? So you see du dt equals minus u du dx. So if u is big, u du dx will be big, and so that transport will be very large. So imagine that you have a wave. The sol imagine the, the wave solution of this equation, and it was the drawing in blue there, the numerical simulation of that. You imagine that at the top of the wave, u is bigger than at the bottom of the wave. So the top of the wave will travel faster than the bottom of the wave. So this is the reason why some of the waves can break, because the crest will, try, will travel faster than the, than the, than the true of the, of, of the wave. So when you do the analysis of this uh, quite simple uh, equation, simple but singular equation, you end up with this drawing. And uh, you see time is, is on the line coming uh, in our direction. x is the space variable. And u, this is the amplitude of a wave. And I made a drawing of a wave at different moments of its life. So first, you have a simple kind of, of a gentle, maybe I can do that. Yes, this is a, a, a very nice wave. OK, this thing will propagate. And as I just explained, at one point, the wave will have a very singular behavior like that. You have a vertical wall there. And what we, we can describe is that what is the behavior, what is the relation between u, x, the space, on time t, when you have this behavior. And if you just say, in fact, that the shape of the wave is like a cubic function, you end up to prove that. Oops. You end up to prove that you have this equation that, that's, that should be true for the mo just at the moment where the wave, the wave will break. And if you do that, you prove that the amplitude of the wave will vary at the square root of time and the, and the the, the, way the, 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 way, the way the wave will break will be with a power of three halves of time. Okay? And in fact, if we come back to the drawing, you see that? You have a kind of uh, fold, and when you look the wave from the top, you have a black line, and this black line is, is just a power three halves of the time. And the green line, the green curve on the side, is just the power one half that we just see by mathematics. OK, so that's, that was uh, 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 something with the analysis, that we, a prediction of the analysis. So what about true waves? And this is the work I started in 2008 to see if these simple things was true with waves. So what we did, 
is we borrow a water table in the uh, Ecole Centrale Marseille, which is an engineering school in Marseille. They have one of these tables there. And we manage to produce a single wave. So I will not give more details on that. You have a simple glass plate that we see from the top on the top drawing. And uh, you, we have a 45 degree mirror down uh, below the table. We have between three, two and three centimeters of water on this table. We have a light at the top, and we have a camera looking in the mirror. What we will see is this kind of thing. So you see this straight line there? This is the wave that will propagate to the left. And of course, we manage, because of some conditions, to study the breaking of this wave. So we can look at that. Oops. Yes. So the wave, so I have to say that this is also a high speed camera a movie. Okay, so the, the wave will propagate quite fast, half a meter a second, if I remember well, but the breaking will, will happen very, very fast. And you see the breaking there? I can come back a bit. You see, this is a progression of the top of the wind and it progresses to the top of the image, meaning that this wave will invade also on the side of the, of, of the crest. So when we do uh, analysis of that, so you see you have, we have also capillarity waves which are different than gravity waves, I have to say, small, the small ripples that we see at the surface there. And what you can do is you can make an image analysis and to build what is called a space-time diagram. So you take one line on each video image and you can pile up all these lines to have a new representation of a movie. It's a photography of a movie. The horizontal coordinate there is time, and the vertical coordinates was x, that is the, the spatial dimension. And if you do the analysis of that, we can measure this. So this is the propagation of a crest, and this is the breaking, the, the front of a breaking. And if we measure this as a function of time, we have this behavior, and you see, we recover the slope, believe me, this is a, what is called a log plot, okay, this is in math, and you have this power free off that, that is clearly visible. And so that, the prediction, which is a theoretical prediction, is really checked on this experiment. The second uh, prediction that Yves Pomo uh, made was, as, as I said before, there is a lateral progression of a breaking all along the crest of the wave. And there, the new equation is a bit more complicated. It is there, look at that, it is a, still a UQ, but you have a Y square there. And so we wanted to study what is, what is the, the prediction, how can you compare the prediction of this lateral extension. And here you see a movie where in blue we have the mat, okay, and superimposed on the true movie. And you see, so the blue is, the mathematics of what we think is, it should happen, and, and be, beyond that, you have a true realization of, it, of, of, of the breaking of a wave. And, and this is a mathematical proof also that the extension of a breaking of a wave is in square root of time. So that was the end of what I thought the end of the project, that was 2009 or something like that. We published this paper after you had to correct the proofs, you know, the process and so on. And uh, we came back with another idea, which is, yes, but that was true for uh, shallow water waves. What will happen if you are in the middle of the ocean where you have deep water waves? What is the breaking of deep water waves? And we know that that's, that's a very important question. Okay, we want to, to, to calculate, or we would like to calculate uh, global warming on Earth but the exchange between oceans and atmospheres is not at all understood. And people plug numbers in their codes that maybe we should be, we should be able to, to be critics about that, okay? So to understand the breaking is something important for the exchange between CO2, temperature, many things, between the air and the ocean. So the idea there is an idea, an old idea in fact, that you can focus waves and this is very uh, popular in light. If you take a glass of water and you have a sun on this side, 
it, we, we do that uh, every lunch, okay? You see the focusing of the waves there. Okay, this is another example where you have a parabolic mirror and you send a light on it and you see there is this, this kind of strange things appearing and this is called a caustic. Where is the, you can ask, why do I have that? So imagine you take this parabolic mirror and you say, this mirror, it will not be a true mirror, but it will be a, an emitter, we say. This emitter of light will emit a ray perpendicular to, to its surface there. One ray is green there. Here you have another one, here you have another one. And in some areas of the plane, in front of the kind of mirror, you have three rays. And here you have only one ray. So in fact, you see that there is this cusp that I presented before, it is still there, it is there, okay? The parabolic mirror is there, and you will plot what is called the phase of the wave, that is the age of the wave, if you want. You see that at some point of the space, you have three waves arriving there, so three phases. And here, you have only one phase, so one ray, okay? So these are pictures of the ray theories, these are pictures of the phase, and this is taken from an article from 92 of, uh, of Michael Berry. This is a numerical simulation that uh, we did on this single wave equation. We have a parabolic emitter, and we recover, indeed, that the intensity of the waves are very strong inside the cusp, which is called the Vigan's cusp here, exactly that as it was light. Okay? But now you have not only rays, you have also interferences, because we know that optical, uh, uh, geometrical optic is not enough to describe light. Okay? You have also interferences that can play a role, so, but it, it works. So, general things, why is focusing still interesting in science? And yesterday, I was going through a paper on focusing of light by dark matter in the universe. You know, you have some matter, if you have a star behind it, the, the light can be focused by black holes. I don't know, maybe Roger who can tell more about that, but you, you have also focusing of that. So you see some lights, and you can guess what is the lens, what is, this, the, the, what is the, the matter that the, the light was distorted with, okay? And, and also in mathematics, you have a lot of difficult problems due to this singularity, okay? And one of the most famous paper is by Percy in, in uh, 46. Moreover, and this is very new in what we, we try to do now, the water waves are not light waves, are not sound waves, where caustics are very possible. But water waves are also nonlinear waves, okay? There is a UDU DX term. That was the term <coughs> that was involved in the first, the first demonstration I made, okay? So water waves are also very special. They are waves, but they can be very special. <coughs> so we make some uh, very short experiment. <laughs> Uh, that was last year, the year, the year before. We have a parabolic, here you see the, there is a parabolic uh, uh, emitter, wave emitter. You see we have this parabolic wave front, and we can make interferences there. And we, we can also have, okay, there is a movie there. You can also have a breaking. You see, the front waves are there, and they can break. Where do they break? Somewhere in the Regan's cusp. Okay, so we were at this point where uh, with Ravira we decided, yes, we should do something together, we should work on this phenomena together. <coughs> so we, uh, oh, I, might, I want to say that before, is uh, we had a visitor, prof a professor visiting our institute, his name is Gerardo, and we asked him to join this program. Can you do an experiment to try to, to study focusing of waves? He tried for one year, and the results are not not quite good, okay? So he preferred to move to numerics, okay? So he calculated, a tr he, he made the numerical integration of a true water equations, and you see that uh, he has the cast and so on, and he, we are now at the point to compare his numerical calculation so, so with a prediction. So this is a ray theory, this is optic, uh, geometrical optics, the one there, 
this is the waves, and the, the dash line is a prediction 46 by Percy. So you see the prediction is not quite good. So we have still plenty of work to, uh, on that. So there, we decided together to set up this new uh, arrangement, this new setup. And uh, uh, so this setup is the following. It's a water table. It's a, <coughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a glass plate, which is about, I don't remember, two meter long, one, one 50, 160, and uh, one, one meter, 1.2, I don't remember the exact sizes. And we have a, a motor. The motor is driven by a computer. Here we have a parabolic wave meter, and, uh, and uh, we, have, we, can we can borrow, we have several high-speed video cameras in the lab, and so you will, you will see what we just finished uh, last week. And even we have still problem between Mac and the PC computer, as you know, for the, for the format of a video. And I can read then on my computer, but Javier cannot, cannot have the movies. So maybe you can come now and maybe you can describe okay. this. So the, this is one of the, the movies that we did with where we can actually see the moment where the wave breaks, but also have the, the texture and the different texture that the water uh, uh, takes within this phenomenon. And for me, as an artist, what I was interested for was Yeah. What was interesting for me uh, as an artist it was uh, as I worked with this, it was the, uh, for once the texture of the of this uh, breaking wave, which is for me uh, completely sublime, and also it, it's I don't know it uh, somehow it, it it's also represent how when the when the wave form uh, disappear, and when the wave form will die somehow and re be, be again into the water and recreate it again. And all the time uh, having her own identity somehow, so it was really interesting for me. And so it's 1,000 images a second over there, and already I could see some uh, some, some problems. Things. You see the ripples on the surface, the ripple yeah. lines. It seems that they do not move in the space. So it seems the ripples do not move in the space. So that's. The signification of that is that the ripples will travel backwards at the same velocity of the wave will travel this way. And this is quite strange. I, I don't know why we have to see that, but we have to understand that. So there are a lot of a lot of scientific questions. We would like also to check the, the cusp, of course, measuring the size of this object. And there is another movie there. And, which is quite and also we wanted to make this art project ab about this wave, the wave, the water wave, because uh, with Patrice we said that uh, we uh, we we communicate with waves, sound waves or uh, light waves, and even for the touching also there's waves. So it was interesting to say that uh, the water wave is the only somehow visible. Uh, form of, of a wave of communication is also, as Patrice says, like I, I, I also read in a book that it's of the struggle between the atmosphere and the water. So I think it's the permanent struggle between these two, which represent the, the atmosphere, uh, the energy of the wind, and also so the, the, the climate and the water. So it, it, for me, the, also the, this water wave was uh, an icon of what is happening, of the uh, exchanges of uh, energies and communication between all of us and also wh what we wanted to do here is to isolate one phenomenon of the nature and recreate it in the lab to try to study of course its evolution and behavior but also uh, to, yeah, to understand with Patrice to understand the phenomena itself and um, yeah uh, it's also of course uh, it shows for me this uh, yeah, this exchange between everything, which is uh, there in this moment for me. And well, then this is just the first part of the project. And uh, lately, we just uh, met some people from the um, uh, mechanic and acoustic lab, which we I would like really to work with them uh, to uh, try to use the me the measures that Patrice uh, made, uh, mathematical models, the cusp, and what we have here in, in images to try to uh, 
get them to work with me to try to do uh, the same thing, the same wave, the same cost with the sound. We still don't know exactly which uh, will be the, la the final uh, uh, form of the co collaboration, but we already thought that maybe they could uh, take the model of Patrice and to put it into, uh, into music to create, uh, they're, they're also working on something that they call uh, sound metaphors, which is a new, uh, it's a new research uh, plan that they have to say, for example, how it would be the sound of a, of a ball uh, in, in the sky, like a, a how do you say, a, the, the bowling? Ball? Bouncing in the in the of the of a ball, but not here in the in the ground, but in the sky. How could we make the, a metaphor like this? So I think it would be really interesting to 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 be able to work with them in this uh, acts, for example, to be to work with my uh, vocabulary, my, my semantic with their metaphors, but also I I wanted to do this thing with the model of the, that that Patrice does, and to bring it into music and to use also the cusp the real uh, geometrical space to uh, make the, the sound diffusion into the, the space where the, uh, the installation will be done, I, will, I hope so, in the future. <laughs> so also what is interesting for me here is the, utilis the use of the fast cam, which allows to see uh, subtlety and uh, things that the eye cannot see and that we can imagine but we cannot really see. For me it's really interesting all this little um, uh, fold Rebels, um, it's really interesting for me as, as, a, as a aesthetic form and as, as I say also as a, as a symbolic thing. Um, and yeah, um, I, I wanted to say something that I, I found in a book that it, I, it's really beautiful for me is that everything is wave, the universe of a space and matter is charged with energy and this energy is organized into the pulsations we call waves, like echoes of the heartbeat. They give form of the heartbeat. They give form to the universe. So I, I thought it was really, for me it was really interesting uh, as, a, as an artistic form. And then we were talking with Patrice and we discovered some other labs who are making also uh, uh, waves studies. And we realized that if we made this installation with this kind of picture that I wanted to use more a picture than a movie to just have this moment where it will uh, became something else, just this moment, this, I'm interesting of that, to have the sound and also to be able to have, a, um, how do I say, um, to have a, a measure of the water in here in the Vieux-Port, for example, and to have a measure and to bring it into oscilloscope and to have the heartbeat of the of the city of Marseille somehow, the, the, the waves movement. This will be the, the whole, can I say, whole concept of the, of the movie, uh, of the movie, sorry, of the, of, the, of, the, of the project and the exhibition. So that's it, and maybe Patrice should add some things, I don't know. Uh, what can I say, that we, it, it wasn't so obvious to produce this uh, experiments on these waves. The water, the level of water can, can change from half a millimeter. And it is very different. It does not work as we want, okay? We spend uh, days trying to have these things. And uh, at one moment, we, everything was perfect, you know? And it was a kind of um, moment de grâce in French, <laughs> you see? It works, you know? And it, in fact, the scientific and the artistic uh, points met at this precise time and both of us we were really this is it you know yes, and together yes. and that was very you know sometimes you can think or we may think that I, have, I was just the technician you know trying to play with uh, the motors on the table on the water and so on and she was just the photographer on the other side taking nice pictures that was very different we have a kind of communion of, uh, of the different things and, uh, and uh, what is really also uh funny is that, for example, when we see at one picture, we are, most of the time, we are totally agreed that this is the picture that we both wanted. So this is also different because we don't have maybe the same sensibility, but we have the same idea of what we wanted somehow, even if we it didn't just, know. Yeah, it has to be perfect, and we don't know how. <laughs>
we do not have the same sense of perfection, but uh, somewhere it's too, it was there, yeah. And also we should say that we spend a lot of time trying to do this, man uh, this uh, manipulation, this experience, because it didn't work, and, and beside, in, in the lab, in the, uh, our neighbor, was having a really, really, really complicated experience and it, it did really? experiment and it didn't work at all. It was a lot of different problems. And we were somehow together and we were saying, yes, we, don't, we cannot do it neither. We have this new problem. And then one day I told, I told him, yes, but you know, your experiment is really complicated. Our experiment is really easy when I compare it to yours. And he said to me, yes, but there are some, maybe some uh, experiments that are complex because of the mechanics, but there are some other experiments that are complex because the phenomena itself is complex. Then I was relieved. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.